Herzlich willkommen heute zu einer ganz besonderen Folge. Unser 959 Paris Dakar wird heute den ersten Kilometer absolvieren. Jackie, thank you very much for this for, ride. For what? Yeah, for this huh? ride. For the what? Nice, the nice drift. For, for driving in the, in the snow? <laughs> huh? It's totally unexpected. <laughs> yes, yes. So how does it feel for you? I mean, the car has been gently restored by the crew of the Porsche Museum, which I think did an incredible job. Um, so what was the feeling of doing the first meters after that? Did some memories come back from the Paris Dakar? Honestly, first of all, it's a fantastic uh, job to restore it and to have still the car existing almost uh, 39 25, years yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Um, you have to remember, the challenge is to make out of a sport car, mm. and it's a 959, mm. that means a quite sophisticated car, a car who is able to beat classic off-road yes. vehicle made for. Wow. On that aspect, clearly, there was a group of engineers up there who play an important role in it. And I like to mention Roland Cousmol, number one. And the second one is the decision of the head of uh, the development at the time, Helmut Bott, who accept the idea of doing that incredible challenge. But there was, there was one thing he knew, It was the first time that Porsche developed a four-wheel drive transmission uh, and the Dakar was just the perfect test for it. But it was a big challenge. So the idea of seeing me doing in 83 the Paris-Dakar with the Mercedes mm. Gay and all these things and having the idea to enter the East Afri African safari car of Val de Garde modified into a specific mm. car for Paris-Dakar and a four-wheel drive transmission is the key of this incredible success. That mm. means entering three times, winning two times with the wow. famous French driver, René Metz. Wow. When you just said that this was really the sports car, the, the Porsche 959 Dakar. So what was the handling about this car and what was the specialties and uh, the advantages of the 959 compared to the competition? The first point is that nobody thought in those days we would be successful. Mm. But yeah. we knew we, we could do it. Mm. And to succeed, we went in September in Algeria. We went to uh, Taman Rasset in the mountains to try the rocky sections. Mm. We went in the desert, we went in the dunes. And uh, that's where we have built up our success in advance, in a way. No, honestly. To see a Porsche 959 cruising in the Tenere Desert. Mm. And the desert is not flat, although the dune looks flattened. Mm. To see that car cruising at 230 km per hour, that was made by René Metz. Not me, I must mm, admit. Yeah, yeah. At two ten, 210, I stop, yes. I lift up. Wow. Because the desert, it's like the sea. There is not a single dune who is the same yes. as in the sea. You feel all the waves are the same. It's not true. Suddenly, for an unknown, unknown reason, you have a, a, a wave which is much higher, much deeper, and then you have a problem. The desert is exactly uh, the same. But you have to imagine that car, mm -hmm. the 959 mm -hmm. road version that everybody wanted in those mm -hmm. days, twin turbo, some electronics, the four-wheel drive transmission, doing 12,000 kilometers on three weeks wow. with stages so are eight hours long, yeah. 320 liters of fuel, and you have to make the distance at a time with a very limited group yeah. of people. Yes. All together, the team, when that car won uh, the Dakar, 18 people, five mechanics in the plane. The Renlighter Peter Falco <laughs> was ahead uh, of it. Six people in two trucks, uh, eight by wheel, eight by eight, 
uh, wheel transmission and a six by six with two drivers, two uh, mechanics and two people to maintain mm. the stock of mm. parts eventually. Mm. Plus the six drivers, mm. 18 people. Wow. It's a marathon. It's like uh, no a triathlon, yeah. let's say. <laughs> the mountain, the rocky yes. section, the sand and, and all this. And that's the reason why we are together today. Yes. Because what has been done at that time, and although the time has run away, it has made this car and the first one, the 911, uh, an iconic uh, car. Absolutely. We are honoring those people Absolutely. and also uh, probably the hardest uh, race yes. you have on this world because three weeks non-stop, the mileage, the mm. difficulties, uh, the mud sometimes, mm. uh, the sand, the dry. Um, it was a real adventure and that belongs to the story of Porsche because every step, every step at Porsche, there is a technical reason, development mm. reason behind it, and uh, that what that was make Porsche so famous in the world. Wow! It's uh, an incredible brand, se yes. seventy-five years old yes. or almost yes. seventy-five years yes. old, and uh, yes, we have been part of it. Yes. I mean, this is for me hard to imagine. I, I have a very, very special relationship with Roland Kusma because he chose me back then as a Porsche Junior. And I remember when I joined Porsche, sometimes I asked him and he would sometimes try to share some stories from the Dakar back in the days and I could not imagine. And still I cannot up to this day because this is, sounds so unique, you know. And I remember as a kid, some of the, the footages where the helicopters, I think, couldn't catch you or couldn't keep up with the speed. I mean, this is... What I remember, but I mean, doing this like for weeks in this car with this power, and I just now I just got a small taste of it running beside you, and it, it's a powerful car, which like perfectly handling. But to go like on, on rocks and all these different types, this is just incredible, you know. For and me. it's a sport <laughs> car, but you're, sport ranch, car. you're right to mention Roland Cousmol yes. and the guys who made the yes. car because every adventure, every goal, every uh, challenges it's made by uh, humans mm. and when you are saying that you are mm. just honoring those Absolutely. who make the success Absolutely. of a company in case of Porsche or the success of an adventure yes. it's made by men and you know as a driver yourself yes. having been two times world champion you yes. know you know that the essential of the yes. the, the job is done by people you don't see exactly Yep. You are the 100%. top of the iceberg, we are the top yes. of the iceberg, yes. but underneath yes. you are just honoring those who yes. give you the right car and the right tool to win. 100%. And that's the case with, <laughs> with that, that with this exceptional 100%. story. When we go back to 1986, uh, there was a double victory, Rennie Match won, you finished second, so a wonderful double victory for Porsche. Do you have memories now sitting behind the wheel, how the edition of the 1986 Paris-Dakar went? And what was the difficulties at the time? It's very emotional. Yeah. When you go back in a car you have used in the yes. past and you didn't expect to drive it, especially in this incredible s surrounding, yes. <laughs> or it's totally, well, it's we are a little desert. bit in the mountains, so we haven't tried the rocky section yet. But yes, it's emotional, but it makes me think about those who made it, uh, made it uh, possible. And you know, winning, you never know if yes. you're going to win, because for example, we were all stuck before the, the day before the arrival when we arrived in Senegal where you have all that water near the sea and mm. all the... We were all stuck but in a bath of mud that you cannot even believe. Okay. There are some pictures existing. Yeah. On that moment when we tried to cross uh, almost a lake with a lot of mud and we all started as fast as we could to reach the other side and 10 meters before the end we were all stuck Incredible. all the cars <laughs> the three cars stuck in the mud and we didn't know how to go out of it and finally uh, we made it there are pictures of Roland that yeah. you have mentioned yes. is covered with mud yes, yes. you know yes. because we are just taking a bath of it but yes. we made it and then as you said yes the ending of the, la the, the third attempt was the right one because we were first and, uh, and second. 
and that's the reason why we are all yes. together here honoring these people yes. and that guy who is so special. And you were, you know, initiating or helping initiating this project back in the time. And this is, uh, you know, for me, just incredible because I think also at that time in the 80s, Porsche was successful in Formula One with the engine. They were winning in Group C at Le Mans multiple times, World Endurance Championship and the Dakar. And I think you couldn't be more versatile than that. You're absolutely <laughs> right. That the, the total extreme. Yes. yes. Porsche built up his history through successes, mm. 917, 956, 962, 936, mm. everywhere you mentioned Formula One engine yes. by Metzger, yes, yes. Uh, and it's still the case, enfin, you, yes. now you're approaching other yes. goals uh, yes. in, in the close future, but uh, yes, I was uh, the man at the start mm. with the basic idea of doing it, but what I didn't know, that it was... Uh, at the end was going to be a, a success and the success came by yes. those people who work in what I call in the shadow. But that's a good point, so I have a small favor to ask. Do you think that I could do maybe one or two laps myself to get the experience of the 959 Paris You Dakar? can do as many laps <laughs> you want, you are welcome. Oh, okay. But remember, <laughs> remember you're the first one to drive it on the snow conditions. After you. You, you are maybe the Walter Roll of the situation, you know, in the Monte Carlo. <laughs> I tried my best. I think I was just scratching the surface. What the car gave me was unbelievable grip. And you know, for a circuit driver, I cannot imagine a car, you know, handling like that and the grip like that on a gravel, even though, you know, mm -hmm. it was snow. Then there was some small path down there with big rocks. I mean, for here, <laughs> this was quite, uh, you know, amazing. Like I said, just even I was just scratching the, the top of the surface and it was still something special and unique to drive, you know. Do you realize you were not born when uh, <laughs> we run that car in the Paris Dakar? I was born. I was no, a kid. Come on, no, come no, on, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Now you make me blush because yeah. I look younger, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. what about going back uh, one last time? Yeah. Okay, but I believe I'm only the co-pilot, and this is okay. Yes, I mean, I'm sorry for you. I'm the oldest one, so I'm it's normal. Sure. And I'm for sure. So Kuno, wie war es für dich heute, den 959 nach monatelanger Arbeit und Wiederaufbau äh, fahren zu sehen? Boah, das kann man kaum in Worte äh, zusammenfassen. Ich finde es einfach sensationell, ähm, den Wagen jetzt heute wieder fahren mhm. zu sehen. Das war einfach, einfach kaum mit Worte zu beschreiben. Und für, dein, für das Museumsteam, also für deine Crew, wie war das, heute den 959 wieder ja, zu bewegen mit dem Originalfahrer? Ich meine, das macht ja die Geschichte erlebbar und begreifbar eigentlich. Oder? Ja, du sagst es gerade. Mhm. Das Thema ist natürlich, auf der einen Seite war das Auto jahrelang jetzt nur gestanden und jetzt ist eine neue Symbiose da und wir haben den restauriert, sehr sanft, aber dennoch hart fahrbar mhm. und dementsprechend ähm, steht das ganze Team da und zeigt den Daumen nach oben und sind sehr, sehr happy drüben. Wow. Jackie, if you describe your revival with your 959 Paris Dakar today in just three words, what would that be? It will be without any doubt, memories, emotions, passion. Wow, I get goosebumps. That's very special. Ich kann nur sagen, ich habe sehr genossen, heute die Runden mit Jackie zusammen zu fahren, natürlich auf dem Beifahrersitz. Aber selber meine paar Runden, die ich selber fahren durfte, war natürlich für mich auch ganz speziell. Weil neues Terrain und den 959 bin ich persönlich noch nie gefahren. Ich hoffe, euch hat es gefallen und ich bin mir sicher, wir sehen uns ganz bald wieder. Bis bald, ciao.